Okay, so we have an inlet screen, okay? This inlet screen is also designed to help protect the pump from sucking any debris in. But the unique thing about this inlet screen, you see how it's screened on the bottom, but then on the side, we have these finger-sized holes in here. So like, it's still gonna get debris in there in some way, shape, or form. Underneath that, we have an impeller. This impeller is, it basically sucks water in the bottom and kicks it out the side. That side runs right up the discharge pipe. This impeller is a very unique fan blade. But unlike a fan blade, the impeller does not move air very well at all. It's designed to move solids, not gases, right? The reason we have the weep hole is because if you picture, if you take a cereal bowl or a cup and you, you turn it upside down and you push it slowly down into water. Like a vacuum. Well, you, you keep the air in the bowl, right? Well, if we keep the air in that bowl, that, that's keeping air up in this bowl, right? Because what's gonna happen is we're gonna take this pump and we're actually gonna set it down in water, right? Well, if we don't give that air anywhere to bleed out of, then our impeller is surrounded in air and it can't move air. And if, it, if it's surrounded in air and can't move air, then when the pump kicks on, the impeller spins and spins and spins, but it just kills itself because it couldn't move any air. So we have to give the air somewhere to escape so that the impeller can be surrounded by water. Once the impeller is surrounded by water, it does really good. A, another good analogy for this would be like a boat. Boats have propellers. This is an impeller. A propeller pushes water, an impeller pulls water, okay? So a boat has a propeller. It's kind of like a fan blade. Problem is, you would never fire up a boat motor and like set it in your house and try to move air around your house, right? right. They're great at moving water, yeah. but they, they are not good at moving air. Yeah. Same thing here. The pump actually has a factory drilled weep hole here. And, and the instructions will tell you that you don't need a weep hole. The problem is this factory drilled weep hole is in a cast iron housing. And what happens to cast iron after it sits in water for a while? It rusts, right? So this thing rust closed. Now we don't have a weep hole anymore. And then if we go through some dry times and this pit dries out naturally and then fills back up slowly, we trap more air underneath there. So these weep holes aren't just for the first time we set the pump down in the hole, it's for any time the pit goes dry and then gets back wet again. We always drill one in the plastic because the plastic will never rust and corrode and, and everything else. So this pump has two power cords on it. One is the actual power cord for the pump. That's this one here. You can follow it and it goes straight down into the top of the pump. So if I plug this into the wall, the pump comes on, never shuts off, which is kind of cool on piggyback float switches is if you show up to them, you can actually test if it's a bad float switch. Yeah. This other cord runs only to the float switch. Mm -hmm. You see, it does not go into the top of the pump. It just goes to the float switch assembly. So what this cord is doing is there's a switch inside here. And when the flow comes up, this plug allows continuity to pass through the plug. If our sump pump is plugged in behind this one, mm -hmm. then our sump pump comes on. And when the float switch drops, this plug stops allowing electricity to come through so our pump shuts off. Not all sump pumps have two quarts. Some of them have an internal float switch and just one quart. Doesn't really make a difference either which way, but that's how they operate. One perk to having a piggyback float switch assembly is if your float switch goes bad, you can replace just the float switch without having to replace the pump. It's kind of a false sense of security though. Chances are, if your pump is old enough for your float switch to go bad, you probably want to be replacing your pump too, yeah. right? There's a lot of pumps where the float switch dies and it's just the beginning of the signs of the end of life for the pump. Right. And so what we do in those cases is we walk up to it and the first thing we do is we unplug both from the receptacle, we throw away the piggyback switch and we plug the pump straight in the receptacle. Sometimes the pump will come on. And that tells us that the float switch was bad, not necessarily the pump, right? And so we can use that, like now we're, we're in an emergency scenario, the basement's probably flooded or something like that. But we can plug their pump in and give it one last ride to pump the water down and make it to where we can safely get in there and clean things out and, and put a new pump in, right? So it's kind of nice to be able to use the old pump to pump the pit down yeah. and, and get things running before we put in a new one. If this float switch died in a week or two, then yeah, we're just gonna be replacing the float switch. But if this pump's five years old or older and the float switch died, we're usually gonna be saying it's time for a new pump. Another thing for you is, is how this thing works. So 
This float switch is actually two pieces. It's two components. So we have the actual float that rides on this shaft, but the shaft itself is what turns the pump on and off. Okay. The reason we have a float riding on the shaft is as water is coming up and water is rising, the shaft is not rising. And it's not until the float bumps into the top of the shaft. Mm -hmm. Float hits the shaft, pump comes on. Notice the shaft stays up even though the float is coming down. So we're gonna pump the water level down all the way down to here. And then when the weight of the float hits the bottom of the shaft, it pulls it, it, pulls it down and turns it off. These sliding switch assemblies like this allow us more bandwidth to pump the pit down with. If this was a fixed thing, then it would like kick on, kick off, right. kick on, kick off, kick on. Kick, and that would short cycling is the number one killer of sump pumps. Yeah. So that's why we want it to kick on up here and then kick off down here. All, all sump pumps, even ones with a non piggyback float, all of them will have some sort of sliding float to where the pump is able to pump like a nine inch span of water yeah. instead of just boom, 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 over and over.